Everyone's like, oh, look, here comes Pensy Joe bringing the Pennsylvania stuff. Because really test uh, probably being a headlight, but we'll, we'll take the sit at 10. Proceed to 15. Hey everybody, this is Pensy Joe back again for another layout update video. And we're still in the design phase this time around, and I know it's been a while since we did the first one. So without further ado, let's get started with the lower level. Um, we're not going to go back to the upper level for now. Uh, we're going to focus down on the lower level. As you can see, there are two by fours that are outlined in orange that represent the support structure that will hold up the main level. I have not started designing what the lower level will need. Although I was thinking of maybe having the uh, the same 2x4s represent the lower level as well. Um, well, to hold that up on the ground, I, I, uh, actually. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, we have the South Carolina region in the bottom right corner, which is basically the low level of the helix coming down. Um... As you see, it's not going to do a continuation of going up over and over again. But I'll show you later on what the helix would look like uh, as a side view. So from there, we have a swing out bridge. As you can see, there is a hidden line outline of the swing bridge that will be there. There will also be a switch on the bridge that will be thrown manu manually. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a tortoise or anything like that. Uh, keep in mind that the the lower level will be twenty four will be two feet off the ground. Uh, I will explain later on in the future video why that will be, but um, anyways, that's not the point of uh, concern right now. So yeah, you have a the secondary wine line in uh, <laughs> wine right. The secondary line is white, as you can see in the Georgia area. It will snake off up into the top right corner where there will be a station and a few more businesses and a staging yard over there for trains going up towards the northern region. And then we'll go into the Jackson, Florida region in a second. And over in the Jacksonville, Florida region, we pretty much have a terminal station at the very end of the line. And there will be a reverse loop where the train will reverse. As you can see, the yellow track is just is the reversing area where the polarity will switch so that when the train goes back up on the outer main now, because now it's on the outer main since it did the single loop uh, balloon at the, <laughs> at the end of the central, central area that's going to be under the main level for the Pensy area, it'll loop back around and it'll go all the way up and there's also a reverse, and the reason why there's a reverser there is because um, when the train, if you want to back a train into the, sta into the terminal station at Jacksonville, you'll have to switch over and you'll have to reverse, have a reverser to reverse the track. And obviously, if you don't want to reverse the track, you don't have to reverse the loop anymore because when the train goes back up, there's no reverse loops on the upper level. So... Yeah, um, as you can see, there's some more switching areas. I haven't completed the design yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to the top left corner of the Jacksonville, Florida region. As you can see, there is a car manufacturing plant, and there's a meat packing plant, as well as some uh, other you know small facilities. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the bottom part of the peninsula near the train station. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing any more businesses, or if I'm just going to put more buildings and suburbs over there. Same thing with the top left corner. I'm just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. As you can see, there's a piece of track of a secondary track just going around that uh, support structure right there near the double main line. And I'm not, I'm just not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. So this is something I've been thinking about for a while. Um, right now I'm in like the process of just thinking about what buildings I'm going to try and like collect over time and like acquire before I start building. So yeah, this is, this is pretty much the, the main like uh, 
changes that's been going on. Uh, this is something I really wanted to share with, even though this has actually been done for a while now. Uh, I just haven't got to the point where I really want to discuss uh, more about the layout in, in depth detail and have more details to discuss about. And I figured it wouldn't be warranted enough to just not, you know, do an update. And it's just the second lower level. So, yes, it's been some time and I did some more work today. So without further ado, let's see what I've been working on. Alrighty, so I'm going to try and... Not rush this, but I'm going to explain what this is. This is the Helix main level. Now, on the main level, you would you've probably already seen this already. And this is the 20th inch level. So this is the 20th inch level from the lower levels, um, zero ground. And as you can see, that number right there is 16 feet 0.6667 inches, which is, well, Actually, it's not 0.66 inches. What it is is that that's a, um, a decimal um, conversion from 16 feet 8 inches. So each level has to go travel 16 feet 8 inches. And you might be wondering, okay, well, where's the 16 foot 8 inches? Well, it starts from the bottom right where, the, where that information is told on the inner loop. And that inner loop is actually the 16 foot 8 inches that goes all the way around. Okay, I think we're starting to see a pattern here. As you can see, each level is not a complete oval. Each level is done by 16 feet 8 inches in length for the inner loop of track. So that represents a 2% grade to go 4 inches in height difference. So as you can see, this is going to be a really interesting uh, helix design right here. So I'm going to have to make some close and rather precise, you know, cuts in it when I do, like, the boards for these. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of board I'm going to use for these, but this is levels 5, 4, and 3. And each of those points represent, you know, when they're going to connect to each other and make the spiral oval helix to go up. I'll also show levels 1, 2, and the lower level um, ramp, and you'll see... You know, a, a great idea of what's going on with that, as well as some conversion um, text I've made near the bottom when we get to that point. But uh, yeah, uh, this is not going to be the easiest feat. Um, the plan is to create the lower level and upper level first. Pretty much install the track as well there too, and then do the helix last. Um uh, But I'm not going to really do a lot of track work until I get to that point. Um, I'm going to do track work and and other stuff on the bench work level. But as, as I have probably stated in previous videos, the, the helix is going to be last, or the bench work for the helix. After that, I'm going to install the track and the, the cork bedding that will be a part of that. Continuing the method of madness for this uh, helix, um, yeah, it's again, it's not it's not a complete oval every single time. However, when I, once I did the mathematic, you know, the math and all that stuff, as you can see with that, you know, information right there, it's almost a hundred foot of track to make a two foot level. Now, this is actually a twenty inch, you know, level kind of thing because I had to make sure that. The main level and the lower level actually meet where they're supposed to be. And where the tracks go to enter and exit the helix, they need to be at the right level too. So this is the map I had to do in order to figure out, you know, how they're going to go up and down the levels. And in total, there are seven levels from the lower level all the way to the main level. Alrighty, this is some very important information right here. This is the overall estimate cost for all flex track that will be needed for the layout. I have not accounted all the switches to the layout or crossovers. I'm not going to have any X crossovers as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> I just I want the layout to be usable and easy as possible. Uh, 
but there will be some switching, nonetheless. Uh, I just don't find X crossovers to be very useful for most of the regions on my layout, especially for the Pennsylvania area. Um, we're not really into the metropolitan kind of area, which would be off in the distance um, from the Union Station. So there's no really need for like an X crossing, especially at either end of the station, because there's not enough length at the Union Station for the Pennsy area. But yeah, as you can see, the total is around $3,100 uh, for pretty much 69 five, Walther's 5-packs flex track packs. Um, at first, it, the number was a lot higher because I did my math wrong. So I had to redo my math and, you know, pretty much make a, an idea of how much each pack would be. And, and to be honest, from, from what I found, a lot of the packs, especially on eBay, and some people try to sell the packs higher on eBay, they're around $45 a pack. I'm not sure if they've gone up or, or down since then, or even at stores or online, but I think it was a fair, you know, guesstimation of how much it's going to cost for each section of track. We got the inside main, outside main, secondary line, helix inside overall, and helix outside overall length so i did the helix and i did the lower main and the and the lower level secondary track so far so it of course it's subject to change if i try to do more lower level track but i think i got an, a good amount of track already uh in terms of getting the numbers for so yeah this is something i wanted to share of, you know the method of madness to try and figure out all the numbers and stuff for that I will do uh, something about switches at some point. I just need to find. I just need to get an example of a Walther's DCC friendly um, number six switch and do some tests on you know how much money they are and how long it is, so I can adjust my lengths on my switches to get a better idea of how big the switches are and if I need to change anything with the layout design. But I'm pretty sure I don't have to really change too much. But you never know. Um, obviously I'm not going to have big steam engines going everywhere, so, yeah, <laughs> it'll be rather interesting. Anyways, let's go to the last portion of this, um, whole entire update. Alrighty, to round up this whole, uh, update and second part of my layout, uh, designing, here is the side view, just a rough idea of the side view. It's a really <laughs> simple scale, like, you know, sketch of the side view. As you can see, the overall height difference is 28 inches, and that's pretty much how it's going to look like the oval helix as it goes from the helix level, the lower, and the main level, and there's pretty much uh, <laughs> five levels in between. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting how it's going to you know, be uh, be built. Um, obviously, those uh, zigzagging lines represent the... They represent the inner track, you know, spiraling. So, as you can see, that, uh, that grade is not too uh, steep. Uh, and I tested the height clearance between the tracks... Four inches is uh, once the track comes back around over the same spot, you know, it, uh, <laughs> it is like probably five inch, probably close to five, five or six inches uh, in clearance. So there's a lot of clearance for like, um, you know, anything pretty much. If I want to add some like scenery or whatnot, I can do that. And there's going to be a wall on the inside that protects the trains from falling inwards if they start streamlining and derailing. And there's also a, a wall, you know, pretty much like a shelf wall, like very thin, like uh, not really cardboard, but I, I forgot what the material is that you can use for the fascia for your model layouts. Something similar to that will be used for um, keeping the trains from falling outwards and onto the floor as well. But it's not too high that, you know, you can't see the trains. And there's obviously enough room for me to get my hands in there in case something does derail and I can pull them out and fix them. Anyways, guys, that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, layout update. And uh, this is Pensy Joe, and I'll see you guys again in the next video down the line. Bye now. the hill and by the shore Hear the mighty rush of the engine Hear the lonesome hobo squall Riding through the jungle on the Wabash Cannonball 
Now here's the daddy Claxton, may his name forever stand And may he be remembered in the courts throughout the land When his earthly race is over, let the curtains round him fall We'll carry him home to victory on the Wabash Cannonball So listen to the jingle, the rumble and the roar as she glides along the woodland to the hill and by the shore Hear the mighty rush of the engine, hear the lonesome hobo squall Riding through the jungle on the Wabash Cannonball 